Hey everyone, welcome back to the Half Soy Bean channel. My name is Sharon and today we are doing something really exciting. I'm going to try and make a Bridgerton inspired wedding dress. If it means anything, I did end up binging it over the weekend. So I actually really enjoyed about the first two thirds of it and then towards the end I was like, what is going on? And it really had me questioning Simon and Daphne's relationship. The ending irked me a little, but I'm not gonna comment anymore because it's still quite new and I don't want to spoil it for people. Unlike their relationship, what is a no-brainer is Anna Melissa Jewelry. So thank you so much once again for sponsoring today's video. I've partnered with them a few times now and I really love their jewelry so much. They are currently having a Valentine's sale so you can get all of their jewelry for 15% off. I always say this, but what makes Ana Luisa jewelry so awesome is that they are all about reusing existing gold materials. So they'll either take old gold jewelry or like old computer parts and use that to make something new. Being carbon neutral might also be an important point for you when you are looking to spend your money with certain businesses. And Ana Luisa is 100% carbon neutral, so they will offset all of their carbon emissions from start to finish throughout all of their business procedures, which is really, really awesome. They also create their jewelry in limited batches, so they're not creating excess waste. And I actually missed out on these heart lock earrings the last time they had them on their website and I was like oh no I really wanted them but this time around I was able to get my hands on some so I'm really happy about them. I always talk about these safety pin earrings because I feel like they just really go so well with like the whole vibe of half soybean and the fact that I have a second pair of safety pin earrings with a heart lock now is just right up my alley. I love them so much. I think also the pairing of them goes really well together. The other thing is I really, really like stacked jewelry, but the thing is I'm not really good at <laughs> matching jewelry. So I love that Ana Luisa, they just have pairings already for you. So this one's a little chain and then I've got this emerald green pendant. I love green. So this is just really, really beautiful. Not saying that you have to give presents on Valentine's at all, but if you are looking to give to someone that you love, Ana Luisa is an option for you. And say you don't like something about the quality or you're just not happy with something, they have a 365 day return warranty period. So you can get a refund or you can get a replacement. Just a reminder, they're having 15% all of their jewelry. There's no code, but you can click my link below in the description box. You can go have a look if you'd like to. You might be thinking, why did she pick this dress? It's a little bit not Bridgerton themed at all, but I thought that's what made it fun. It just stood out to me. I feel like a lot of vintage wedding dresses have that kind of empire waistline, and I think that's what makes it really fun to work with. Yeah, and I also chose this dress because of the extravagant sleeves, and I thought that that would give me lots of material to work with and make into poofy sleeves. This is also a handmade dress, I think. Um, I think it's maybe like from the 70s or something and you can tell it's been made at home. All the finishing edges are done by zigzag stitch and some of the edges have been left raw, I believe. So yes, it's someone's dress that they made at home and maybe they wore it for their wedding. I'm not really sure, but yeah, it's in my hands now. So I want to give it a little bit of a spruce. I did hear that the costuming in the show isn't too historically accurate and not being a history buff myself, I don't think I want to be historically accurate in creating this dress. My plan for this is to sort of give it a square, scoopy neckline. Apparently that's for like the romantic effect. I started off by seam ripping the sleeves and the decorative trimming of the dress. I just figured that doing this would make it easier to adjust the neckline first and not have all this fabric in the way. I think I want to alter the neckline next, so I think I'm just gonna cut out like a sort of square neckline and I'll probably make it the same 
on the front and the back. I was really conservative about how much I cut and I only later realized that I could have cut way more, but oh well. In terms of the dress length, I know so many of the dresses in Bridgerton are floor length or they have a really lovely train, but that's just so impractical for me. There's nothing I hate more than being restricted in trying to move forward by just loads and loads of fabric at my feet. I want it to be sort of midi, like maybe at my ankle sort of length, and I think that would be a cute way to show off um, whatever shoes I'm wearing as well. Now in the show, we see a lot of puff sleeves, just like fitted sleeves, cap sleeves, all different kind of sleeves. My inspiration for the sleeves are actually a vintage pattern that I found at the thrift store for 50 cents. It's a butterick pattern, and look at those extravagant, poofy sleeves. That is just completely just what I want to recreate on my dress as well. And I haven't really opened this properly and had a look at the sleeve pattern, but I just want to maybe use this as a guide to give me that poofy effect. Okay, based on what I'm seeing from these pattern instructions, you have to do like a lot. There's like sleeves and then sleeve stays, sleeve binding, sleeve stiffening armhole binding and you know what I am just not in the mood to do all of that I am hoping that it'll works out if I just do the outer sleeve piece and sort of just gather the top curve I opened up the original bell sleeves to lay flat and honestly those vintage sleeve pieces were huge so it all worked out in my favor the first course of action now, I think, is going to be to attach some bias binding to the neckline. I thought about cutting out my own facing and sort of adding it to the neck, but I just found some bias. It's not even the right color, it's yellow, but I'm sure it's going to work fine. So I'm going to use this and sort of wrap around the square neckline. It's sort of like maneuver my way around the zipper at the back as well, so that looks all neat. To attach the bias to the edge of the neckline, I just used my machine, like how you would normally attach bias tape, but then to attach it down to the dress, I ended up doing a blind stitch by hand because I didn't want there to be obvious machine stitches along the neckline. This is sort of where we are right now. I've just finished off the neckline. Um, a part of me is telling me that it should have come down a little bit more in the front, maybe like down to here. But then also I'm not trying to be like super accurate and making the exact same neckline as you see in Bridgerton, which generally tends to be quite low and all the characters boobs are just like rising to the sky, just floating into the air. Then I put a basting stitch on the top edge of the sleeve. This is just the longest stitch on your machine. I gathered the sleeve and then I realized I wanted to overlock the bottom edge of the sleeves and also close off the armpit seam of the sleeve and sew that down. I proceeded to fold once up to create a channel along the bottom edge of the sleeve so that I could insert an elastic. But before inserting the elastic, I thought it would be easier to attach the sleeve to the dress first. Apologies, it's just completely out of focus here. Then I inserted the elastic. You can do this by putting a safety pin on the end of the elastic and just feed it through the channel. have the basic dress that I wanted to make so this is all done now but I'm I was thinking this is like too plain I need something a little bit more sparkly or something some sort of detailing there are three things that I picked up today at the store just to spice things up a little bit on the dress so firstly I've got this beaded ribbon it was like one of the least expensive beaded ribbons so it's not white but I thought it was good enough so I'm definitely going to use that and I also picked up some ribbon maybe for the waistline because I thought that many dresses had that feature and then I picked up this flower ribbon and I don't know if I actually want to use this 
or not but I thought it might be pretty cute to add if I can on the sleeves or something like that so I just decided to pick this up as well. The beaded ribbon is two layers so I'm going to use the top part only which sits in the middle of the ribbon and attach that to the neckline and fold the other parts back. Then I hand sewed it all along the neckline of the dress. So I've done the neckline beading and I think it looks really, really great. Now I just need to decide if I want a ribbon sash like this, like this, or if I just want to use this in the wide setting and put this on here like this. I think I like this option actually. I'll do that. The waistband was similarly just more hand sewing onto the dress. Finally, I hemmed the bottom of the dress and we are done. So let's just take another look at what we had before here. And here's what it looks like after. I think the beads were just the final touch that it needed. And also with the sleeves, because they are so big, you can wear them down as sort of a full length or you can push them up for more of a poof. They look pretty soft, but you could definitely add interfacing or something to make them stand up if you want that extra poofy look. I can definitely see Daphne wearing this, maybe just as a casual dress, since she wears a lot of white dresses throughout the show anyway. Also, another thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. They're having 15% off their jewelry if you want to have a look. Let me know what you think of this wedding dress thrift flip but other than that thanks so much for watching and i will see you very soon in the next video